How are you? Yeah, it's fine, thank you, yes. Good, good. good. Are we streaming? Excellent. Good. Will this cool. show up? Will this show up automatically on my on my page if I'm a co-host? How does it work? No. So I have to uh, share it. No, you will, you will need to share it onto your page, John. Okay. okay. Uh, yep. So that gives you the opportunity just to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, I will do that. The next couple of moments, uh, and we've already got seven people watching us. Hello, folks. Thank you for joining us this evening. We're just getting ourselves organised and set up. To bear with us while we fit it with technology. <laughs> uh, oh, it's it's all my family. <laughs> it's all your family, is it? Excellent. All my family. Well, I guess they found the right place. Um, right. Sure. I think that's right. I've, I've tried to do it. <laughs> uh, but if they're all there, they were all kind of hanging out on my page waiting for it to go live. So good. That's excellent. Goodness knows what they'll be saying. I've got Anna holding it to watch the comments. So they don't put me off with their cheeky banter. Do you want to practice a screen share? Do you want to screen share the kids' reviews to see how that goes? Okay, that's great. And we have got a Treasure Man mug to wave. And we also have a Treasure Man book to wave. <laughs> I, I yes. see you one, and I raise you. I raise you three. <laughs> That's the way to do it. <laughs> so I can Good. demonstrate the offer that if you buy two this weekend, you see, you see everything's thought. All right. right. Go and get in first with the offers. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you want to try to share the video? I think the kids are watching. If you want to. Yes, well, let's, let's try that, shall we? I think that'd be very uh, exciting. Hang on a second, but so let me just see if we can get away to this. So exciting new Christian fiction for children and families. Would that be you, Joy? It might be me. It might be. Fantastic. Uh, if you so apparently, I heard that this is what the important people thought about your book. So let me just see if I can bring this up. Okay, and we're going to try S first. It. When you, we didn't hear the audio there, when you shared it, did you click the little button at the bottom that said share computer audio? Ooh, right, okay. If you unshare and then come back and um, go back in again, and as you share, you've got the option on the bottom that says share computer audio. Right, um, let's have a look. So 
let's pause. You need to un back. you need to stop sharing your video and go back start all over again with the share. Oh, right. That's the that's okay. the that's the rub. So there's something here that says so share, uh, share computer sound. That's the okay. one. Yep. Let's that's one. Treasure Man by Joy V. I like the Treasure Man because I liked how Jack was very funny and kept kept me entertained while I was reading the book. I also liked it that even when a sh when Sienna's friend wasn't being very um, encouraging towards her, she still listened to God's plan. Isn't that great? Fantastic. Well, let's see if we can grab another one, shall we? Yes, yes, yes. And I've just had a reminder come off of my phone to tell me there's an event tonight with Joy V. You might have to miss it because this is so much fun. <laughs> Let's stay doing this for another hour. Kids, <laughs> right. Okay. So let's let's try B. H4. Okay. Joe, you can tell me if you can hear. Treasure Man by Joy V. You know why I like the Treasure Man? Because it's so like when when I just do stuff because I'm feeling like I do fun stuff, but when some on the in a, one of the chapters, like, I cry. Oh. Part one. Brilliant. If you, if you want to imagine okay. in your mind what Theo in the book looks and sounds like, that's a really good place to start. <laughs> Absolutely, yes. That's right. And let's have, because there's a last one here, Okay, we can't resist somebody called K, who's eight seven. Let's have a look and see if we can grab this one. Da, 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 da. Come along, Mr. YouTube. There you go, just waiting for that to begin. Oh, try restarting your device. I really liked the treasure man because it wasn't like a boring story because Jack kept you entertained. Um, another reason I, um, I, I, know I really liked how Jamie became a kid again um, by Sienna, Jack and Theo doing their best. Fantastic. Isn't that amazing? Yes, there we go. And that's from Joy's own website. So that's great. So having got a word from our sponsors, who <laughs> are the end customers, who are the people who really want to read the books, <laughs> we simply want to say good evening to everybody tonight as we come for a launch of The Treasure Man, which Joy is going to wave to us. In fact, I'll wave my book as well. And this is Joy's first book, which is officially being launched tomorrow, which is Saturday the 21st of uh, November. So thank you very much indeed. And uh, unfortunately, because we've sort of moved into level four restrictions in sunny Motherwell, then that means we haven't been able to do this in the global bookshop as we would have liked. But in other words, that means that I'm in my back room. And Joy, where about to you? Well, I'm actually in the place where I spend my life. So this is my office and ah. my classroom and my dining room table. Okay. Um, and yeah, this is this is where I spend seven or eight hours a day at work. Ah, yeah. okay. 
I could sit the other side of the table to see my very exciting array of books, but they're mainly cookbooks and I thought it might be a little bit distracting. So, so we do the flocked wallpaper instead to kind of keep people focused on me, not on Nigella. Ah, I see. Mm -hmm. well, the, the other thing, of course, uh, whenever we did these rehearsals, because uh, we have done a couple of rehearsals, is you did have a Christmas tree in the background. And the Christmas tree, apparently, you told me on, I think, Monday, uh, had much, much chocolate on it, which so appeared at the rehearsal on Tuesday. Uh, and then it had a greatly reduced bowl. That's that all that's left with the Christmas. <laughs> that's about it, yeah. I think tomorrow's another Christmas tree chocolate shopping expedition to Asda, obviously, because that's the only place uh, left. Yes, yeah, so it'll need to be. That's definitely essential for shopping, though. Uh, we're definitely going to allow you to do that. So, uh, so anyway, greetings, Joy. Greetings to everybody else who's watching on Facebook Live. Uh, it's a real pleasure to be doing this. And part of what we do at the Globe Bookshop is we work with local authors to help them, uh, help them spread their, their books, to, to get their books known in the wider community. And it's been a particular pleasure to work with Joy on her first book, The Treasure Man, because Joy used to be a volunteer in the Globe Bookshop. And then you got promotion and you got a proper job. <laughs> I don't think it's a promotion necessarily. Uh, I have to say that, uh, you know, it didn't surprise in the least when we heard that you were writing a book uh, because it's you're, you're very multi-talented you're involved in a lot of different things so not only did you come in and tell us that you're writing a book but you told us that you actually had accepted by a publisher by our friends at instant apostle and ta -da, that's them and it's a big day for instant apostle as well we'll give them a shout out because i think they're launching is it five or six five weeks books today? five books five tonight books yeah Fantastic. so really exciting and yeah, that's right. And the other thing which uh, I probably ought to make clear is that although I say we've been working with Joy to do this book launch, in fact, all we've done is turn on the laptop and send out, uh, send out an email and stick it on Facebook because Joy has had all the hard work writing and pitching to publishing, publishers and then, of course, contending with the proofreaders who always seem to know better than you do, but so we'll just not go there. And it was, it was, it was an amazing experience. It was, and I don't take criticism well, but, but I had uh, an amazing editor who really, oh, she was great. She really brought the best out of the story. So no, well, it, was, that, it was a good experience. Oh, that's great, because it is really important actually. Mm -hmm. So anyway, that's a cue for a quick commercial break. And we've got a couple of special offers on Joy's books over this weekend. The first one, and Joy's going to help me here by waving the Treasure Man book uh, while I try and make sure I get this right. So normally the book is $7.99, and we're going to be doing that at £7 if you buy a single copy, and obviously doing pre-post and, and packing within the UK at the moment. And if you buy two or more, then you're going to get them at £6. So you can either do that by contacting us at the bookshop, or you can order online. If you're ordering online, if you just put in the coupon code in the checkout process, if you put the coupon code TREASURE in capital letters, TREASURE in capital letters, then the books afterwards will be charged at six pounds. And all the books that we've got in the shop have actually got Joy's signature in them. There we go. We have a signature from Joy, ta-da. I couldn't help myself. <laughs> and a free bookmark. And what's more, and this is very last minute, this is one that we've just dropped in at the last minute, is that Joy has actually provided two Treasure Man mugs. Now, look at those mugs. I, I looked at that and said, you know, we'd probably be charging about a tenner for that in the shop. So we've got two of those to give away. Joy's going to pick out somebody at random from the orders that made over the weekend directly from her. And we'll also pick out somebody in random from the orders that made from the bookshop. And we'll work out some way of getting you a mug uh, so that you can have that. So we've got two of those to give away over the weekend. So can I just, also, can I just ask give us a as quick... well if you'd like a personalised message in your mm -hmm. book. If you'd like mm -hmm. a personalised message in the book, Happy Christmas would be a fairly obvious one to somebody or other. Then obviously we'd be delighted to do that. So... 
you never know, that could be a few Christmas presents off your list. So that's great. Sure. Um, so far, I have sold, personally, I have sold over a hundred books. Wow. So everyone who has bought a book from me, you are in the prize draw. If you've bought 10 books, you've got 10 entries in the prize draw. But Andrew sold considerably less so far. So if you really want the mug, I suggest you quickly go online and buy a book from him. And you're far more likely to win a mug from him than you are from me. So, uh, yeah, that's just my little hint for people. That's right. Are... There's yet another cunning plan from Joy. <laughs> full of them. Mm -hmm. So, and also we want to just give a quick shout out to Mar Miriam as well. Uh, Miriam is keeping an eye on your Facebook comments and she'll be answering any questions that we've got as we go along. And uh, an obvious question that we have been asked recently, uh, the Globe Bookshop is in Motherwell. And the Globe Bookshop staff will be available to help people. We obviously can't let you into the shop for the next three weeks. We are planning to reopen again on Saturday, the 12th of December, God willing. But in the meantime, we'll be in the shop Monday to Saturday, 10 o'clock to 4 o'clock. You can get in touch with us by phone, by email, social media. If you've got a carrier pigeon that you want to sell, send, we can open a window and let the carrier pigeon in. You can even come and knock on the window and for people in the North Lanarkshire area, we can do click and collect. So there's still many ways that we're more than happy to help you in the bookshop. And as well as that, we can also chat with you via Zoom as you're doing just now, or we can do a WhatsApp call, or we can send you images and prices of the stock. So anyway, loads of stuff, loads of ways that we can still help you. And we'd like to find out just a bit more about joy at this point. So. Joy, for folks who are maybe just tuning in this evening and don't know you, why don't you tell us a wee bit about yourself and your family? Okay, so um, my family and I, we live in Motherwell, um, but as you can tell from my accent, I haven't done that all of my life. Um, I, I grew up in Lincoln, uh, England, and then when I was 18, I, I seemed to turn into a weird kind of traveller person and since then have had multiple homes. We were just counting up just earlier this year before our 16th wedding anniversary and we'd had 15 years of marriage in 15 different houses during those 15 years. So I don't know if anywhere feels like home right now but um, for now we are settled in Motherwell. Um, I teach English to mainly to Syrian refugees uh, through the local council um right in my spare time and you know lots of lots of other little stuff like that so that's, that's kind it. of me it's not that exciting but it's not normal either right okay <laughs> tell us a wee bit about your family so uh i'm married to a, a ukrainian um called andre um and that's why i go under the name joy v Anyone who's taken the time to learn how to pronounce my surname um, will uh, be grateful that I, I went under Joy V and not Joy Velika Rodney. Um, so yeah, and then I have two teenage children. Um, Michael is 14 and getting ready for his prelims on Monday and Anna is 13. Um, so yeah, they're, they're my biggest critics really when it comes to oh writing and yeah it's never good. quite good enough i could sort i could please my editor before i pleased my children i see and where, <laughs> where did you meet andre um we met when i was living in kiev i moved out there when i was 23 uh, uh -huh. and lived out there for for many years and after about five of them uh, i met andre um and he really made an impression on me because he was the only guy in the church who actually looked happy to be there. Um, oh. <laughs> he, he was smiling, which was which was really lovely. So yeah, so we, we kind of met and got married and moved to Russia as you do um, yeah. for Andre's work and then moved back to Ukraine and had, had our son and then moved back to the UK. That wasn't anything that was really in our plan, but you know, I think we've all learned in this last year that we can make all the plans we like, but our time and our is ultimately in the Lord's hands, not really in oh, ours. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. And it's obviously my great pleasure to meet Andre. 
um, the kids as well. Uh, yes. They've been passing the night in the shop, so uh, He's hopefully, waving. hopefully they're <laughs> listening this evening, but uh, as long as they're using their 4G signal uh, rather <laughs> than the Wi-Fi, that's very helpful. <laughs> they're actually all sat in the room with me, so uh, they're all... Oh, right, okay. So, big shout out for them. <laughs> uh, they don't want to shout, but they're being really quiet. Well, look, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hand over to Joy for a few minutes and she's going to tell us something about the backstory and something about the book itself and bring us up to date with something of the story without giving away too much of the story, I hope. <laughs> okay, I'll see what I can do. Um, so the story was written um, just before last Christmas um to be given as a gift to to my niece um and it was it was a culmination of many things that had kind of been brewing in my heart and in my mind um over that year we'd we'd seen some some amazing things that had really inspired us on quite a deep level and um had been having some deep conversations with our own children and it all kind of just all built up and and, and I set my alarm for four o'clock in the morning every day one weekend, um, got downstairs and turned the computer on and literally just typed and typed and typed and the story kind of all fell out. Um, <laughs> needless to say, the editor had a lot of work to do on it. We worked very hard then making it readable. Um, but that was that was kind of where the story originally started from. So we printed it out um, for, for, my, for my niece for Christmas. And, and there was just something about the story which I thought this is above and beyond just me. There's something in this story. So in the story, uh, Sienna, who's the main character and her two little brothers, Jack and Theo, they go on an adventure of, of learning how to listen to God. Um, and so, they they start off by listening at Sunday school at kids church and and then trying to apply the lessons they've learned at kids church and and initially that's easier for Theo the little four-year-old than it is for the older two they he seems to just have something of of faith that that I guess sometimes we lose as we get older um but they go on this adventure together and while they're going through that they they meet uh, a young man called Jamie um, and if, if anyone's feeling really clever, you might get the feeling that maybe, maybe Jamie doesn't have too much money. Um, so, and this as well was, was things that I'd seen, things that had inspired me that particular year. And what was really interesting was when, when I gave my niece the book, it turned out that the, her and her brothers had actually had quite a similar experience with a homeless man just a couple of months before I wrote the story. So it was really, it was really exciting for them. So yeah, so, so we then, after Christmas, I couldn't get rid of the story. It was just in my mind. And I thought, you know what, there's, there's other people besides my niece and nephews that need to know how to listen to God. There's other people, not just kids even, there's, there's adults as well that, that need to know that actually Sometimes it just sounds like my own thoughts and sometimes, and I need to learn how to weigh that up and I need to learn how to test that, to check that it's not just my own thoughts. And, and so um, I began to look for a publisher uh, and that was, that was an interesting experience. So I had worked at The Glow and had, I, I knew a lot of the publishers that were around. I knew who was around, I knew what they published, you know, all of that market research stuff and sent it off to several places. Uh, it, the, the situation, certainly in the UK right now with Christian publishing is, it's, it's becoming a very small pond, especially with children's fiction. Um, and, and many of the people I sent them to, they were either we're not publishing anymore, or we've got our plans for the next three years, or we don't take unsolicited manuscripts, which is books you've written that they didn't ask you to write. So I was kind of a little bit stuck. Um, and then I remembered Instant Apostle. So I'd obviously seen their books in the, in the glow. And I had, um, I had read an article about them in a magazine because I'm, I was a conscientious, 
conscientious volunteer I, I read articles um, and knew that they were really they had a heart for up and coming publishers people who wouldn't otherwise get published so I sent it off to them and uh, they came back with quite quite a scathing review they said, <laughs> they said uh, Nate's changing a lot but actually in, in essence it's a good story with some good teaching points so so we worked really hard over summer to to get that all reshaped and um so one of the things that that changed in the story was that um initially Sienna had belonged to a two-parent family and and one of the things the the editor raised with me was you know can we make this more inclusive to kids that probably don't go to church to kids that probably don't have the perfect family you know can we can we make it so that they feel like they're accepted as well they don't have to come from the perfect family to be able to hear God's voice. So, so, so we got rid of, of the dad. Um, and uh, I didn't actually tell my husband that I had removed the father from the equation. And when we finally got the printed version of the book, he sat down one weekend to read it and was really quite angry to find out that the dad figure had walked out. Um, he was very angry. It took him quite a while to forgive me for knocking out the, the dad. Um, but what happened to Sienna's dad is possibly the story for another book, for another time. I think we might, we might see something there. So stay tuned. Anyway, um, yeah, so we worked hard getting it, getting it done and everything like that. Um, and yeah. Um, so if it's okay with you, I would like to read a chapter of the book. Excellent. Good, good. So I'm going to read chapter five. Um, and if you really like it, chapter six is actually on my website. I'm reading it on my website, which is just down there, joyv.org. That's my website. I'm not selling on the website. I sell through the Glow Bookstore because I support my local Christian bookshop. But you can see uh, chapter six and you can hear me read chapter six if you like chapter five. OK, let's have a look at chapter five. What did you learn in kids church yesterday? Asked mum as they hurried to breakfast club early the next morning. Jack and Theo were running ahead as usual and mum kept a close eye on them as she and Sienna chatted together. Alison taught us about treasure, but we're God's treasure and we're important and special to him. Mum smiled at Sienna and nodded. That's very true. You and your brothers are very special to God and to me. I would say you three are my greatest treasures. Mum, is it sometimes hard to remember that we're, we're your treasure? You know, like when we're naughty or when you're really tired after work. Hmm. Maybe sometimes it is, but it doesn't change how precious you are. Mum thought for a moment and then she pulled out a one pound coin. How much is this worth? It's worth a pound, said Sienna. And what about now, said Mum, dropping the coin into a muddy puddle. Ew, Mum, now it's all dirty. Mum laughed and picked up the coin. Yeah, it's dirty and it needs to be cleaned up. But has it lost its worth? Is it worth any less? Now it's wet and dirty. No, it's still worth a pound, but I don't want to touch it. Sienna searched in her pocket for a tissue to clean it with. I feel the same way about you guys. Sometimes you can really annoy each other or not listen to me, and I might not be too happy about it. But none of that changes your worth. Maybe you need cleaning up on the outside or on the inside, but you're still precious. Sienna handed mum a tissue and they jogged to catch up with the boys who were waiting for them at the corner. As they crossed the main road, Theo pointed to a parade of shops nearby. No, Theo, said mum, we're not going to the shops today. No, mum, not the shop, insisted Theo, grabbing mum's hand and pulling her. Look, a man. Sienna looked to where Theo was pointing and saw a man huddled in the doorway of an empty shop. He had a woolly hat on and was wrapped in a sleeping bag. He looked dirty and cold and in his hand he held a cup. Mum and Sienna looked at each other. Maybe we can give him that pound, asked Sienna, looking at the coin her mum was cleaning up. Mum bit her lip. I'm not sure that's a good idea, Sienna. It's not always safe to talk to people we don't know. 
But we can't do nothing, persisted Sienna. Okay, I have an idea, said Mum, pulling out the money she usually kept in her pocket for the bus. Come on. Mum walked into the nearby baker's shop. The three children followed her. Could I have a cup of coffee and a bacon roll, please? Mum asked the lady behind the counter. Jack and Theo cheered and Sienna felt warm and happy inside. Can I give him the roll, please? asked Sienna. Not this time, Sienna. Maybe another day, Mum said. We don't know this man and we need to stay safe. I'll give him the breakfast today. Two minutes later, everyone trooped out of the shop. Mum was holding the coffee. Sienna had the roll. Jack had a handful of sugar sachets and Theo was carrying some paper napkins. Mum approached the man. Excuse me. The man looked up at Mum when she spoke. He looked younger than Sienna had expected. He looked about Mum's age. His eyes were very, very sad, but he tried to smile when he saw Mum and the children. The children wanted to buy you breakfast, explained Mum, handing him the cup of coffee. The man looked surprised. Sienna passed the roll to Mum and smiled as Mum handed it to him. Thank you, said the man, trying to smile and then looked quickly away. I got you lots of sugar because it makes the coffee taste better, said Jack, giving the sachets to Mum to pass on. Theo was hiding behind Sienna, but he took a deep breath and stepped forward, holding out the napkins. Thank you, repeated the man as Mum passed him the napkins from Theo. You're welcome, said Theo, causing the man to laugh out loud. You don't know how much this means to me, said the man looking at Mum. Mum smiled and then looked at her watch. <gasps> we have to run, we're going to be late. Sorry, you take care. Bye, shouted the children as they all hurried away. Mum grabbed the boys' hands and broke into a run with Sienna racing behind them. I think we made his day, gasped Sienna as they ran along. It made my day too, said Mum. Mum, why didn't we just give him the pound coin? Then we wouldn't be late for breakfast club. Mum slowed down a little and thought for a moment. Sienna knew the answer would be important, so she waited for Mum to speak. Sometimes money isn't enough. Anyone can give money, but we gave him the gift of thoughtfulness and attention. That will make more of a difference to his day than just putting money in the cup and walking away. Maybe tomorrow's gift of thoughtfulness could be asking his name, said Sienna. I don't like thinking of him as the man. I'd like to know his name. That's a kind thought, said Mum, but he may not be there tomorrow. Let's wait and see, replied Sienna. And so that's, that's when they first meet Jamie. And uh, so, yeah, you'll find out more in chapter six, which is on the website, or you would find out even more if you go to the GLOW website and buy a couple of books. I do recommend you buy two. Don't just buy one to give away because actually it's such a good story uh, that you're gonna want to, to keep one and give one away. In the back as well, just in the back, there's a couple of questions for each chapter just to kind of help you if you're reading it with your kids or, you know, if, if, if someone's reading it who maybe doesn't go to church and doesn't have someone they can kind of bounce these ideas off, that's what these questions were. So in the back for chapter five, it says, in this chapter, mum throws a pound coin into a muddy puddle. The coin is dirty, but it doesn't lose its value. Sometimes we can look at people and we think they're all messed up, but God still loves them. Remember, however dirty someone may seem, it doesn't change their worth to God. So just a little thought there for them to kind of take away and, and ponder and yeah. Yeah, I, absolutely. I think that's one of the really helpful aspects of the book, Joy, is the fact that it does have these discussion questions and that they're very concise. You know, there, there's not an hour and a half of discussion questions to work through uh, for, for each chapter, but, but rather there's just some, some very brief pointers. And yeah, I, I have to say, when I read the book and uh, I understand what Andre is saying, uh, about suddenly discovering that the dad has disappeared. But I do think that that was, that was one of the things that was very helpful about the book is it doesn't have a whole sense of everything being neatly wrapped up because of course life isn't like that. 
um, for the kind of age group that you're writing for, they're, they're actually starting to become aware that not everything always is tidy at the end of the day. And there, there are occasionally sort of messes, uh, personal messes, family messes that don't get resolved and don't get sorted out. And we need to, to deal with that. Just before we, we move on and, and ask a few questions, um, you, you said very kind things quite rightly about the good folks at Infinite Apostle. And Nikki Copeland, uh, who I think was the, the overall editor for the book, am I right in saying that? Yeah. Yep. So I had I worked with Sheila Jacobs as the text editor, and then Nikki Copeland was the overall yeah. hooker in her and sorter outer. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, look, Nikki uh, is probably sort of doing another four book launches tonight. Uh, but she did send us this message and she says, Instant Apostle are delighted to have published The Treasure Man by Joy D. It's a lovely story that conveys the message that no one is too little to hear God's voice and to be used by him. Everyone has a part to play in the kingdom and no one is outside of God's love. Uh, we're very grateful to Andrew and his team for hosting this launch. Oh, thank you very much. And uh, say thank you for all your support. Do, do tell your friends and family about the book and make sure you buy lots of copies for Christmas presents with every blessing, Nicky Copeland for Instant Apostle. Uh, so, so that's, that's lovely. So very many thanks to Nicky Copeland. And I know that even if they can't jump on live with us, they'll be able to see the video afterwards and we'll also be sharing this in, onto our YouTube channel as well. So what we're going to do is we're, we're going to take some questions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pitch a couple of questions to Joy first and then we'll have a quick look and see if we've got any questions that have come in through the Facebook feed. But uh, one of the things that I really liked about your book Joy was the fact that and I'm picking my words carefully here, but I think for a lot of children's books, they have two emotions. They either have happy or they have sad. Okay, happy or you're sad, happy or sad. And one of the things that really struck me was the fact that the, the children, we've got three children in the book, and from Sienna to right the way through Jake and Theo, uh, they're, they're all expressing different emotions, a wide range of emotions. And, as well as that, they express emotions that actually change within the kind of text. And I suppose I just wondered how you, how you put yourself into the mind of children in that way. Is it personal experience or is it bringing up your own children or is it just that kind of sense that you have? Uh, how, how did you pick out all these different emotions for the kids? So, so part of it is um, how I raised my own children. Um, one of my favourite sayings when they were little is use your words, use your words. And, uh, but with children, you have to give them the words. You have to explain to them what those words are. Um, and as well, part of teaching English is being able to equip my students with the words they need to, to express how they're feeling. Um, so so it very much in my mind i i was wanting to to help children to to process their emotions and to give them the words they needed and that if you like that emotional maturity uh to be able to deal with what is some very big emotions i think sometimes we underestimate how much children feel um certainly when i remember back to when i was eight nine ten my emotions were really, they were valid for me, but they were also very intense and often very complicated. Um, and I don't think I had the words to express that. And then it often then just came out as grumpiness or, or teariness or, or just being plain obnoxious. And it's mainly because I didn't have the words to say. So helping kids get the words they need is actually really, really important to me. Um, and so that's what I try to do with um with theo jack and sienna um uh, yeah yeah that would answer Excellent. that question yeah mm -hmm. lovely so fran is asking what age group do you think this book would work best with okay so um 
it's it's written primarily for eight to 11 year olds. So the main character is 11 years old. So somebody slightly older, 13, 14, they may not be interested in reading a story about someone who's 11. Mm -hmm. However, I have had a very kind review in the last week that said the book is suitable for children aged five to 105, oh. um, which, which I was really quite touched by. Um, and so, um, it's a great book to read with the family. So if you have a family of kids age, you know, five, six, you saw, you know, we um, four year old child there on the screen, he'd, he'd understood bits of it. He's not going to get all of it, but he understood a lot of the story. So it's very much the kind of story you can read at bedtime with your kids. Nothing scary happens. Nothing happens that you know, is, is not nice to go to bed on. Uh, it was deliberately written for, but it is an easy read as well. So although it's written for eight to 11 year olds, uh, my nephew's seven, he read it really easily, I think in a weekend. Um, so I kind of hope that answers the question. It's, it's an easy read for anyone, um, but it is specifically aimed at that 10 to 11 kind of age group. Yeah. Uh, that's right. And one of the other questions that's come in is, do you think this would be suitable as a sort of Sunday school prize? Oh, I absolutely. I think I guess what the answer is going to be. <laughs> that would be, but, I think it would be an amazing idea. In fact, I think for everybody in your Sunday school and uh, yeah, get in touch. We'll, we'll do you a nice discount if you want it for all the kids in your Sunday school. Yeah, we'll help yeah. you out with that. Absolutely. Perfect gift. Absolutely perfect. Perfect gift. Yes, that's right. <laughs> and I, I think one of one of the say, one of the other things as well is that the, I, I found that there is a very realistic portrayal of what Sunday school is like in century twenty one. Uh, you know, the, with the Sunday school teacher Alison, there is a lot of interaction with the children. It wasn't just I'm going to tell you a Bible story, but the teacher was actually very much discussing. So I, I would have thought from that point of view, it would be, it would actually be a really helpful backup uh, to be able to give in that kind of situation. Um, and yeah, Fran's actually saying uh, it was very good reading, very enjoyable and animated. Uh, I bought a book for a family in the church, but she may have to buy another, which would be a terrible thing, but uh, you know, Fran, Fran, I'm sorry. Oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Um, so we've got a couple of couple of questions here, which take us a wee bit further on down the line. Uh, we've got Richard Norden uh, asking if there's going to be any more books, and Deborah writing, "When are you writing the sequel?" Well, right. So there are going to be more books. Um, yeah, there are going to be more books. I. Um, I am, I am often inspired by the little people in my life um, and it seems as though every time I have a conversation um, with the little people I love, more ideas just pop into my head for books. Uh, I actually dreamed half a book last night and then when I woke up I couldn't remember it. I was oh, devastated because no. <laughs> it was such a good book. Um, as far as the sequel, at the moment I'm in the middle of a very exciting writing project. So um, down in well, up here in Motherwell, we've just gone tonight into level four, which is the equivalent of a lockdown. But down in England, which is where the book is based, they actually went down into lockdown two weeks ago. <laughs> it's been the longest two weeks ever. So Sienna, the main character in The Treasure Man, has actually been making the most of this opportunity to blog. And she's been blogging very kindly on my website, just there, joyv.org. So every day, Sometime between about 4.30 and 5, you know, give the kid a chance to get home from imaginary school. Um, and she, she writes about how she's feeling locked down and especially all those thoughts about Christmas. You know, it's like as, as Christian kids, we all know that Christmas is about Jesus. But it is a little bit about presence as well, isn't it? And so, so, you know, kind of the blog is a safe place for D Sienna to just kind of go, meh, and just feel a bit like that. Uh, and at the same time, she's learning how to listen to God by reading her Bible. So every week at, ch at Kids Church, Alison gives them like a new little hint. So she's then trying it out through the week and sharing her verses and, and what she's learning and what she's thinking in the blog as well um and then earlier on this week jack her little brother took over the blog 
uh, which she wasn't very happy about. Um, oh, no. So, yeah. So I'm in the middle of that, and that will last another two weeks, unless the man on television with a pink tie is right, and they stay in lockdown a little bit longer. But until lockdown is finished in England, Sienna is blogging every day. So if you want more of Sienna and Jack and Theo, more is appearing every day. It is as a writer, it's it's one of the most exciting and yet challenging things I've ever done. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's, it's difficult to keep up to date. So uh, absolutely. So what we'll do is if Miriam's working away in the background there, uh, she'll maybe see if she can find a link to the blog on the joyv.org website and post that up slash to blog. Jump. It's that nice and easy. Joyv.org exactly. slash blog. Fantastic. Good. Nice and easy. A, a couple of people have commented about the cover of the book. Uh, you know, how did you pick the covers for the book? Where did that come from? Because I know people say you shouldn't judge a book by its cover, but <laughs> I think that is such a brilliant book because it tells you what's inside the book and it draws you in. Where, how did that come about? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Um, this again is thanks, all thanks to the amazing people at Instant Apostle. Um, so I, I don't know, because I wasn't involved in that part of it, but I, I don't know if that was a group effort or if it was one person. All I know is that the book had gone to the printers before I got to see the cover. And if anything is going to test my faith in a group of people that I've only just met a few months ago, that's it. Um, so when they finally sent me a picture of it, literally, I, I just wept because it was mm. so perfect. It was yeah. so, I couldn't, I, I'm not a designy person. I'm not a pretty, pretty person. Um, but I'm, you know, I couldn't have, I couldn't have imagined anything better. It's absolutely brilliant. And even little, little author things, even the spine, it's really, you know, it's all different yeah. letters and there's the little, the little truck. Um, and so, you know, even on a bookshelf, it looks exciting. And so. Mm. There yeah. you go. So yeah. if, any, if any of you are wondering about the significance of the truck, why Joy even mentioned that, then you're going to have to read the book to find out. In fact, there it is. It makes another appearance again. Sorry, what was that? I was just said there's another question. Oh. Oh, has Andrew frozen? Have I frozen? Okay. Am I here alone? No. Okay, I think Andrew's frozen. It's just you and me. Anna, what's the next question, darling? Um, Lewis said, mm -hmm. um, would you like to develop these characters as they grow up, appearing in future book? Oh, good question, Lewis. Thank you. Yeah, I think I would. Um, I think I would. There's something really nice about the ages that they're at right now. So, um, because you've got Sienna, who's like slightly older, and then Theo, who's who's a lot younger, it's a really kind of nice dynamic. And I think if we got to the stage where they were all teenagers and all hormonal together in a little house with a very small bedroom, it might lose some of the joy. But definitely, definitely developing the story and seeing where they go. I have in mind a story, Sienna's next big adventure will be going to secondary school. And I do have in mind a story possibly following Sienna on that adventure. So there's a lot going on in my little head. It's a little bit crazy in there. Andrew, are you back with us? Okay. No, I don't think he is. Is there any more questions, Emma? No. Sabrina Brook was saying she's she loves the book oh, and she's reading the Sabrina. blog. Oh, thank you, Sabrina. That really means a lot. And Deborah also says she loves the blog. And Deborah says she loves the blog. Oh, I could, I could. Oh, thanks, guys. I think Rickard said he loved the blog as well. Oh, you guys are ace pretending you've read the blog. Uh, okay, Andrew did actually send me some questions, not in case of technical errors, but just in case there was nobody watching and nobody asking any questions. Um, he asked me a question about um, what is my inspiration? Um, now, obviously, it's a work of fiction, 
And so any mention of any people or places is entirely fictional. Um, however, there were, there were, I do have inspirations. Um, and so, so one of my inspirations is, is my, my niece and my nephew, they, nephews, both of them, they are very much my inspiration when it comes to writing. Um, there is, a, there is a, I'm just going to give a, a shout out because um, Andrew's not here to tell me not to. Um, I'm going to give a shout out to Jubilee Church in Hull, who very much were an inspiration to me uh, for the part of the story that's set in Hull. Oh, sorry about that, Anna. Uh, another, question. another question. Great. Yeah, what's the question? Uh, so Miriam from the Grow Bookshop says, how was writing the book? Did you feel like you ever lost motivation? What kept you going? Okay, that's really cool. So... The actual writing of the book was really exciting as I was watching the story kind of unfold. Um, that was really, that was really cool. So um, during that, it was, it, I didn't lose motivation. The kind of times I wanted to lose motivation was when the editor sent it back to me again for like the fourth time, like, could you just read this again? And I was so grateful it was such a short book uh, and I hadn't written a book that was, you know, 500 pages long. Um, that was that was tiring and, and the constant editing. But as I said, you know, the editor I had was amazing. And it was honestly like I was on some kind of writing masterclass with her. And so, you know, and even now as I'm writing Sienna's blog, she's in my head, uh, which is which is good. It's good to have an editor in your head. Um, but she's in my head going, don't, don't, don't do quite so many exclamation marks. You don't need two question marks, one's enough. Um, and so, yeah, so I would say the, I found the editing harder than the actual writing. Is there any more questions there, Anna? Uh, Alison says I'm doing well. Oh, Anna's doing amazingly well, bless her. That's my daughter. Uh, oh, what's your, what's been your favourite response to the book so far from Robin? Oh, you know what, every, every single response and review that I get from the book is precious. Um, I feel as though I put so much of myself in the book and um, because it's a book about hearing from God, it's actually very, very personal and how we hear from God and how we relate to God is, is really, it's at the very core of who we are. And so every time I get a response, um, it, it moves me um, and it, I've actually spent the last week kind of feeling really vulnerable, like this is going to be out there. And, and for some people, it's not going to be their cup of tea. Um, even for some of my friends, I think they're going to read it and go, she's truly crazy. But, you know, I just felt it was still important to put it out there. So every review I get, um, one of the first people that, that my mum sent it to um, was a, a friend of ours who, um, an, an older gentleman with grandchildren, and he said he cried all the way through it. Um, and that really meant a lot that it had touched somebody so deeply. Um, I had another review earlier on this week. The same thing, a, um, a gentleman who'd bought it for his granddaughter. Um, like flipping it, you should have told me that I was gonna cry all the way through it. And so just the fact that people are actually relating emotionally to it and, and it's, yeah, it's touching them actually really, really means a lot to me. Yeah. So Deborah says you're a very good writer. Would you consider writing for ad adults? Yes. Yeah, I, I would. Um yeah, I would I would do that. I would do that. Okay, uh Miriam says, has it Miriam Matthew, has mm -hmm. it sunk in yet that a piece of your work is going to be read by children all over the UK and possibly the world? <laughs> No, it's it's funny. There's some kind of detachment simply because it's not, you know, it's Joy V. It's not actually my name. I feel almost kind of detached from the book and it's so darn good. I keep thinking I didn't write this. This is far too good. So in some way, I kind of almost have like an emotional detachment from the book. Um, and and so, yeah, um, poor Andrew. He's really trying to get back in again and he's just not managing it. Um, uh-huh. Uh, looks like connections failed from my end. Mm-hmm. 
Okay. No, that's okay. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I think I'm. Sorry, it's made me the host. Oh, goody. Right. Okay. Um, we do have a prayer um, by um, Alan Hoare, who is a, a pastor friend of ours, um, good, good friend. And he read the book way back over the summer and um, again, was really, really moved by it, for which we, I was really touched. Um, and he has sent along a prayer for today, um, but... I haven't actually downloaded it on my phone because um, I sent it to Andrew. So I'm just quickly going to see if I can download this. To one more question. One more question. Yeah, what's the question, hun? Uh, from Fran. Do you see yourself mm -hmm. as a Christian writer or writer who happens to be a Christian? Would you see yourself writing a secular book? Right. Uh, I would say I see myself as a Christian before I even see myself as a writer. I would say that my hope is that everything I do is for Jesus and for, for his glory. And writing is just one of the things that I do. I would also like to say that I, I work, you know, the work I do on an everyday basis for the council. Uh, I would like to say that I do that for the glory of God as well. Um, so no, I wouldn't see myself as a writer first, not in any way, I'm, I'm actually an English teacher. Um, so, yeah, I I wouldn't see myself as a um, a writer at all. I don't think, to be honest. Um, I've got a book, but that doesn't necessarily mean that I'm a writer. Uh, I guess it does, doesn't it? But no, I would say I'm a Christian first and foremost. Would I write secular books? My books would always, because of who I am, they would always have a theme. Um, that you know, it says in, in scripture that God's put eternity in the heart of man. And I think anything that I write would call out to that. You wrote one secular book. Which one? No, no, that had a Christian theme as well. Mm -hmm. So, arguments with my children. Right, I am going to share. Um, no, I'm not because Andrew's come back in and, and he's the host again now. Darn. Hopefully, Andrew will be able to share um, Alan Hoare's prayer. Uh, if you can't, Andrew, uh, I'm all set up so I can do that now. Um, so Alan is a friend of ours. He's a, uh, he writes books himself. He's written several uh, daily devotionals, which are, you know, really deep and meaty stuff, the good stuff. Um, and he's sent through, sent through a prayer. Um, but I, I can't share because Andrew's come back on again. Any more questions, Anna, real quick? Uh well, not, it's not a question, but Michelle mm -hmm. Ray said it'll be read globally as it's going to South Africa too. Oh, excellent. Thank you, Michelle. Yeah, Michelle's got friends in South Africa. Actually, a copy of it has gone to um, Australia and several yeah, copies yeah. have gone to America. Yeah, so it's already heading all over the world. So, yeah, it's kind of exciting that from my little living room, um, my little flat in Motherwell was where I wrote it, four o'clock in the morning, and suddenly it's going all over the world and hopefully really changing lives, which is kind of really exciting. Let me just see if there's anything else that Andrew wanted to say. Um, da, 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 da. Do you have any publishing plans for the future? No, not really. No. Yeah, loads. Okay. Um, nope. Okay, we can't get hold of Alan's prayer right now. Oh, there we go. Maybe I can now. Yes. All right. We're gonna we're gonna just listen to Alan's prayer. Um, yeah. Let Let's just pray. Alan has a blessing to pray over the um, over the book and over the people who are gonna. Um, watch it so let's see if i can get that one minute oh, can't do it. see if andrew can do it okay um honey because you're here could you come and pray 
just dumping my husband in. He's going to come over and just going to pray, just going to say a blessing over the book and the people who read it and the other books that are being released tonight by Instant Apostle. So my husband, Andre, we wear matching clothes all the time. <laughs> Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much that Joy had this inspiration to get this book, Lord. And I remember that when I read it first time, I had the tears in my eyes as well. Father, I pray that this book will touch many people, Lord. Father, I pray that this book will touch, uh, will encourage people to listen to your voice, Father, and to obey what you're saying, Father. Mm -hmm. I pray that this book will uh, cause many people to fall in love with you again, Lord, or to fall in love with you first time. Father, I pray that you just touch every person reading this book, Father. And I pray that many will receive healing and many will give healing away, Lord, your healing to other people. Father, I pray that people will get touched around the world, in South Africa, in America, in Australia, in Asia, in Europe, Father. I pray, I pray just do your mighty deeds, do your mighty work through, throughout this writing, Lord. Father, and I pray... I pray that Joy will have inspiration to to, uh, to to write something else, to continue writing this work, Father. And I pray that she will, as uh, this book becomes successful, I pray uh, that Joy will uh, keep the spirit of humility, Father, and keep the, keep detached, uh, keep, yeah. uh, keep detached from this, keep seeing this as your work, Father, and keep seeing yourself as a vessel through which the work is being delivered, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Um, Marianne from the Glow Bookshop wants you to send her a link to the Zoom call. Okay. Um, I don't know if I can. Everyone's saying Amen. Hey, Andrew. Amen. Oh, that's a bit. Um, let me see if I can. Um, I don't know if I can because I'm not actually email it to her. I'm not Miriam's friend on Facebook. I'm telling I'm gonna actually if it's okay, if it's okay with you, Miriam, I'm actually going to wind it up um and and finish because our hour is nearly up. I will do the advertising things for GLOW because I used to work for GLOW so I can do that. I um, just want to say that during the next three weeks, oh, she's here. Yeah, Miriam's here all by herself. Um, during the next, yay. Hi, Miriam. Hi. And Hello. And finish because um, our hour is- I am just jumping in. Um, yeah, no problem. To kind of finish off, um, unfortunately, Andrew um, has had his connection problems, which is um, inevitable. It's sometimes just Wi-Fi is, um, you know, not always reliable. Um, <laughs> but on behalf of um, the Glow uh, as a whole, um, we just want to say thank you, not only to you, Joy, but to everybody that is um, watching. Um, it has been you know uh, your joy and it's been a joy to um watch this and be able to see this product in in our hands um, i don't have one unfortunately on me um <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> um, i don't want to have one on me right now but um you know as we've known you and we've we've got to know you through that it's it's such a joy to see um this product and you know um it's brought to you by Facebook Live, um, <laughs> uh, by the Glow Bookshop in Motherwell, and, and also by Joy um, in front of her chocolate Christmas tree, Andrew's told me. Yeah, when I sit the other side of the table, there is a chocolate <laughs> Christmas, well, Christmas tree covered in chocolate behind me. I might have to come and come. Oh, no, you can't come over. It's illegal. You can't oh. come over. You come past <laughs> and I'll throw some chocolate out the window at you. <laughs> um, so... Uh, just as a general uh, to everyone watching, um, look out for some other Facebook Live events. Um, we are trying as a bookshop to um, promote as many local authors and local um, kind of uh, new books that are getting put out um, as much as possible because not only for the entertainment, for people to engage with authors online, but um, to see new books and support their local businesses um, during like this Christmas. Um, so yeah, we'll be announcing more as it goes on and 
you know, if we, you'd like any of the special offers on Joy's book um, tonight, then either get in touch with us, get in touch with Joy, um, or go online. And if you buy a, a book over this uh, weekend, you'll be put in for the prize draw to win the, the fabulous mug that Joy has been showing on screen. Um, so that's all from us. And um, thank you, Joy, so much for uh, this. And I can't read, I can't wait to read your book. Uh, and see what other people think of it but mm -hmm. as yeah. from the glow and from joy thank you so much Robert. thank you bye i don't know if andrew can stop the video because <laughs> i'm not the host let me see if i can Is it still there, Anna? No, oh, well, it's just a bit delayed. Yeah, I think it is. I don't know how to finish it either. Oh my days! Do you think if we just came out of the Zoom meeting, it would just disappear? No, you need to. How do we do? You need to end it on Facebook. Hang on. No, she's not the host. I'm not the host. Oh, you're not. Andrew. Okay. okay. <laughs> no. It's the height of professionalism, isn't it? I'm a host, surely I should be able to finish it, but I can't even see it on my Facebook page. Yeah, hopefully you should be able to end it now. I can't see it on my Facebook page even. To... <sighs> Obviously we just, everybody wants us to keep going. <laughs> What are they doing? End the Zoom. Everyone's saying end the Zoom and see if that works. Oh, bless you. Thank you. And zoom. Okay, I think that seems to be the option. If we end the zoom, I think we'll disappear off. Okay. Okay. So, that's um, fine. Yeah, if you if you just drop out, this is okay. <laughs> that's fine. Right, you. Uh, bye to everyone watching on Facebook. <laughs> Sorry for the extended ending. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll bye. It. Bye.